Hello everybody, Ian Raps here, welcome back to County Line. Alright, so if you remember from last episode, I put down the facility and I actually ended up moving it over here. Um, so basically just sold it and then rebought it, gave myself money back. Uh, I moved it over here uh, because now we don't have any, uh, we don't have any grass going through it. But this may cause problems for other, 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 uh, roots that I've made for course play, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, the one thing I did notice is, I didn't realize this was the fact, but apparently you need manure and liquid manure to make uh, fertilizer, which isn't very good for us because that means we need to get some animals uh, that can make fertilizer. Uh, I don't know if you can actually purchase uh, fertilizer on this map. Uh, where would it be here? If you could, it would probably be maybe at the co-op. Let's just take a quick peek over there. Maybe here somewhere, no. And then, if that's not the case, maybe at the Green Earth Biogas. Sometimes you can pick up uh, stuff at uh, Garden Center, but I don't see uh, the Garden Center or anywhere around here. So perhaps we don't have that option. So apparently, this is the chicken coop. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, so I put it down. And this guy's finishing up. Actually, he's just finished right now. Sweet. Uh, I'll save this as 11. Uh, seed 18 meters. Okay, so we've done all the seeding. It is still spring for us. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to have to get some cows. Uh, but in order to be ready for cows, we need to get some... Uh, grass and whatnot bailed up. Now the problem we're going to run into is the fact that if we uh, with, the, with the seasons mod, you basically have to prepare for winter because you can't harvest grass in the winter, just like real life basically. But uh, you'd be, you're kind of forced to prepare for it a bit more in this context uh, than we were before. Because before you could just kind of you know harvest it with no problem and that's all you needed to do basically. So, but now you kind of have to be a bit more aware of what's going on, because if you aren't careful with it, then you'll run into problems. You'll run into, you run out, I should say, of, you run out of feed for your cattle. So this does present a, us with a couple of problems. First, we don't have any liquid fertilizer to put it into our fertilizer maker, or liquid slurry, I should say, or slurry. Second, we don't have any... Uh, we don't have any solid fertilizer to put into it either, so Kind of in a pickle here a little bit. So basically we need to get cattle. We need to get prepared for the cattle Which means we need to mow a little bit more grass here And if I had known I was gonna do this I should have uh, I should have maybe maybe bailed up some of the straw uh, one of the disadvantages though, of bailing straw uh, with the chopped straw mod is the fact that you lose the benefit of the extra state of fertilizer, so put this in the back over here. There we go. Excellent. And what I will do as well is hopefully I can put it here. We're gonna find out here in a moment. Yes, let's see if we can put it right here. Go figure. I can put this right beside here. This is why I want to put a facility like right in here, but apparently it wouldn't let me before. Well it's not that close. That's bizarre. So like this I was able to place it. Oh, maybe not. Maybe over here I can place it somewhere. Oh, there's a place, but that's not. Doesn't look very nice. What about up here? I can put it up here somewhere. This is the hardest part about placeables: is finding the right place for them. Apparently, I can put it right here. That works actually. It's not too bad. All right. And that's weird. Then I wonder if I can put the. Uh, so we put the fertilizer. We don't have the seed production. Um, because basically what you do is you, um, if I you know, clean up that uh, planter before I forget about it. Because that'll increase the maintenance and uh, I don't know how it works, but we're going to figure that out uh, with the uh, maintaining vehicles and whatnot. This is of course the uh, black sheep modding wash station. And if I'm going to wash anything, this is what I prefer to use. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the uh, power washer here. Wash this guy up. 
I don't know if this is going to make a huge difference or not, honestly, but we're going to go for it anyways. I do like this Great Plain Cedar. It's probably one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorites from the pack. I guess it would be this fate, this is one of my favorites from the pack. And then the other fate would be the uh, Seed Hawk, because of course it's Canadian. It's not 100, I guess if there's parts of it that are Canadian, it's uh, in conjunction with, I think, uh, Vaderstadt, as far as I understand. Um, so, that's kind of the interesting thing about that. There we go. Excellent. And now we can put it away. Should be okay to get around this turn. Yeah. Almost, almost not, actually. This Tron Deer has a not the greatest turning circle I've discovered, uh, as I've mentioned before, basically. So, anyways, we're still in mid spring, and that means we can actually uh, harvest some grass. Let's double check that. So, we look, we can harvest some grass, no problem. So, we're going to do that right now. So, let's put this guy away. <laughs> this is the turning circle on this thing. You think it's going to be enough sometimes, but it's it's not. I don't know. That's my one down my one uh, downfall about this or what the one downfall of this particular uh, cedar I find. I find it just doesn't have uh doesn't have an uh, a good enough lock. But hey, eh, that's the way it goes. Okay. Straighten this out a little bit here. There we go. We might as well leave the John Deere attached. I don't think we need it for anything else at this specific time. Look at that. I, I went like 20 feet and now look how dirty it is already. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Alright, so we need the... I think we're going to do... I think we're going to go ahead and uh, move up to a speed rower. Just because, why not? Uh, so let's go into Massey Ferguson, which I think is at the end here somewhere. Uh, where is he here? I believe it's at the end somewhere. I'm always so blind when it comes to finding specific brands. There it is. So we're gonna get the, we're not gonna get all the Max Ferguson stuff, we're just gonna move up to uh, this, which is 25 grand, which we have enough money for. And the, this guy right here. And we'll just ask them ever so kindly to deliver that to us. Thank you. And thank you. That was 40,000, it's not so bad, I guess. And uh, we're gonna hop into that over there. Here we go. So this is the uh, Massey Ferguson uh, speed rower, I guess. I don't know what you call it, but it's the mower. Actually, it's a lot shorter than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. I didn't realize it was gonna be this, this short. There we go, and let's take it over to our grass field over here, put it to work. Actually moves pretty fast, it's uh, 4 meters, check out the lights here, not too bad. Check out the beacon, this is an older piece of equipment, nice, I didn't even notice that there's a plane up there. Where did it go, there it is, huh, now the question is going to be this, let's just check this out. Uh, let's see here. Grass outline, grass mow four meters. Actually, this is five meters if memory serves. It is five meters. So let's go grass outline. Like so. We put it into this mode. Five meters. We want it to go starting at the northwest corner, heading south, I guess. And we'll do, I don't know, six headlands just because. I don't know how, how crazy it's gonna be. And we'll do the headlands first, yes, that's good. Okay, let's see how this works out. Look at that, this is the first waypoint right here. I do like the turning radius on this thing, which is really nice. And maybe it'll mow a bit fast. So let's see if this works with course play, I'm kinda of curious now. I don't know why it wouldn't. Oh, it can mow pretty fast apparently. There we go, nice. Can I raise and lower the, uh, I'm sure I can raise and lower this. 
Oh, oh yeah. I forgot they did that. <laughs> you can open and close the door. Anyways, return to your nearest point. Uh, so we'll call this uh, grass mow six me uh, five meters. There we go. Let that guy do the mowing, and then we'll get sorted up over here. Let's grab the Oliver, because we haven't used that much. Actually, Ross, the guy who made that John Deere 4760 right there, uh, he actually, uh, he actually, he actually made a, he actually, I don't know, you would call it modernized, or made another uh, tractor, a 7800 that uh, he uh, made Americanized, I guess is the best way to put it. Let's grab this real quick. Interestingly enough, so I don't have the, you notice up here I don't have the wet ground or anything like that, so I'll be able to ted this up. So, question is, how are we gonna do this? Do we need, let me just double check, I believe cows need a little bit of everything. Let's see here. Yes, animals, cows, they need water, straw, grass, hay, and power food, and silage. Okay. It's not a problem. Let's hop over here. So this guy, I can't even, this building, I can't use it all right now. And that's primarily because I don't have any fertilizer, or I don't have any slurry or anything. As you notice, I probably I tried over here to see if I could uh, cultivate this under, but it, apparently I could not. It is a, a texture, and I can't do anything about that. I might be able to mow that maybe, but as far as I can tell, it's just going to sit there. Actually, I don't want to go this way. What am I doing? Let's put this back over here somewhere. Uh, I guess we can put the fertilizer just over here. Fertilizer better, I should say. Put it over by this door right here, so I can see it. Uh, I guess we should wash it first. Because we're not going to need this again until next spring, basically. So, might as well wash the uh, wash the fertilizer better. I don't think it has much, much dirt on it. Now, I'm not sure this is going to make a difference, like I said before, but... It makes a bit more sense uh, in this context. I'll have to wash this forward while I'm at it. It makes a bit more sense because when you wash this, you don't have to use it again for a while. As opposed to when it was before where you kind of just, you know, you would wash it and then like five minutes later you'd use it again. So that's why I was kind of feel, it kind of felt like, well, do I really need to use this? Do I not need to use this? Like, I don't know. Some people just like washing their implements. I'm not a huge fan of it, but... We're gonna give it a go. All right, let's put this back over where we found it. Or back where we're going to put it, I should say. Just up over here. There we go. My tires are probably gonna be all dirty by the time I get over here. Well, not terribly dirty. All right, move this over here. Put us in the, uh, in the shop. There we go. There's a cat. And let's come in down here. And what we'll do is we'll grab the tether. I guess we could make, uh, we could make some hay bale. I'm not sure if we should make hay bales or just do grass bales. That's what I'm uncertain about right now. What would be the best option here? Could go either way, honestly. Um, let's grab this right here. There we go. I guess we'll make some hay bales, why not? We're gonna need both anyways. I if it makes a difference if I put this guy on the Oliver, or put this tether on the Oliver or not. Alright, we'll just get this guy lined up over here. And, let's hop into the John Deere here. We're just going to take the dualies off here for a sec, because we don't need them for what we're going to do next with it. 
There we go. You can hear the engine revving up there. And apparently there's something outside making a ruckus as well. Alright. So, so far this guy's doing a pretty good job actually. Working away pretty quickly. So far, what does that say? Oh, just a license plate. <laughs> that's funny. BS. Black sheep modding, I guess that's supposed to be. It's supposed to be related to that. So far, this is probably my favorite piece of the equipment uh, in the pack. I don't think I would use... I don't think I, unless I have a small, small farm, I don't think I use too many other pieces, uh, to be honest with you. That's missing a little tiny bit, but that's course play. That's mostly just to do with uh, the way I play and... I don't, know, I don't play in a lot. Of, I don't play in a lot of smaller farms, so having the uh, the bigger farm is nice. So I should be able to ted this up, and it should still be theoretically. It should still be. Uh, uh, what's what I'm gonna try and say here? It still should be. I should hay be hay, not grass, because there was something in the notes about if you try and ted your grass when it's wet outside, you won't be able to. Uh, you won't be able to make. Uh, grass. Or hay, I should say. Let's find out here real quick. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. So we'll do this while the uh, our other guys just going around. Got this tetted up here. And we'll make a couple of hay bales. Because we're preparing for cattle, essentially. So. The placeables are nice, but we basically need some... There's something before. I didn't realize we needed stuff before. I thought you might have to put grain or something else in there, but I don't know why I thought that. But in my mind, that's what you needed. Well, obviously, that's not the case. So we're going to go ahead and do this a little bit. Get prepared for the cattle, which also means we should probably get some silage, which means we can make silage bales. Well, could make some silage bales too. That's def a definite possibility as well, at least. I don't know if this is meant to be a, a pasture. That's what we're using it as, so. No problems there, basically. Looks like we're doing good. I don't see many of these this type of tether in my neck of the woods. I know they're around, but they're not super common. Uh, this is uh, more of a common for European style tether, if I had to guess. I think it would be European, yeah. I don't know. Maybe in the United States they use this some places, but not everywhere. I just think that because it's just more it more comes down to like what they're trying to do. Like in Europe, you have to spread it out a lot more so it dries. And uh, in North America, I don't know. I guess it gets hotter here. Uh, I'm thinking of England specifically. So, in that context, it's not really a big issue. You can you can basically stay keep it out, eat pretty easily all. For, well, you basically can like cut your grass and it'll be ready to go within a couple days in some during some stretches of the summer at least Maybe not always but definitely in some times in the summer you can get that So it really just depends All right I'm Surprised this isn't spreading it out a bit more To be honest with you, it just seems to be keeping it in the uh, the windrows pretty neatly Apparently I left that new Holland on again. There we go. Let's go back to our other tractor here. There we go. I must have just left it on. So you can cut grass in the spring, and you can mow grass and all that jazz, uh, but you cannot harvest other things. So if I go into my menu here, the only thing I, think I could harvest would be oilseed radish, poplars, or grass. I can't harvest anything else. So that's the reason why we're cutting grass right now as well. So our next little section of time, uh, we're still in spring for, uh, was it a few more days and, uh, what do we got Monday? We got today, tomorrow, next day is in spring and then it changes to summer and then the temperature goes up to 20, 26 degrees and whatnot. So that is the long term forecast forecast for this area at least so they tell me at least all right nice but that speed rower or whatever you want to call it that mower is pretty neat I don't think we've seen one like that in American style for a, a long time there used to be a force grip one out 
which is still a fantastic one. It's got, I think it's got a lot more options than that uh, Max Ferguson one does, if memory serves, but uh, it is not North American at all. It's uh, Forscrit, whatever brand that is, German perhaps. Nice. Let's get that little bit we missed there. And then head back over here. There we go. Keep doing this until we're basically done. I think uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So once that uh, once that mower finishes that last headland that's doing right now, it's gonna basically gonna go up and down the field, or basically up and down the field, and then it'll be that. So what we're gonna have to do here is uh, do a little bit of plenty. I don't know how many bales of hay we're gonna need or straw or whatnot. Uh, we're going to need some, at the very least, for our animals once we get them. I could buy them right now. I could give us a little bit of money, but I don't think I'd be able to afford many. I could give them this, water, and what else could I give them right now? Mm, that's it, really. Don't have silage for TMR, don't have straw. Yeah, it's better off just waiting. And the reason why I say it's better off waiting is because your animals can die with a Seasons mod if you don't, uh, if you don't feed them properly. Which is good, actually, because before you could just leave them like unattended for like ages, and it wouldn't make a difference. But now, with this, with the seasons mod, it definitely uh, changes it up a little bit. So it makes sure so you have to take care of your animals if you weren't already. Basically, most people probably take care of them and their animals all the time, but on a server, they get they get forgotten sometimes. I'm guilty of it as well. But usually one of the very first things that people always do when they come on the server is they always say, oh, got to take care of the animal sort of thing, so. How big is this tether? Is it six meters? Uh, uh, windrow tether, here we are. So we have the coon, which is eight, no, it's nine meters, okay. Didn't realize it was quite that large. Excellent. So what we could do is we could get the other guy starting to, to mow, or mow, rake, but uh, that's going to create a conflict, I think, because I'm sure he'll catch up to the mower pretty quickly there, and then we'll have a traffic jam, basically, so. I don't know. So far, my thoughts on the tra on the Seasons Mod are, you know, relatively positive. Seems kind of neat. I did read some interesting stuff on their uh, GitHub, and it was kind of like, uh, one of the strange things was like, if you're doing a video with the, if you're doing a video with in the with the developer version, if you're gonna post a video, don't put a link. Don't tell people how to install this, uh, because they're gonna get like a bad opinion. It was kind of like, mm, okay, that's a bit interesting. So, I've been told that the developers are really good people. So, that kind of leaves a that leaves a, a bad taste in my mouth when I read that a little bit. So, we'll see how it goes. I know Farmer Review has mentioned a couple things like that too. Which I weren't too too happy about, but only time will tell, I suppose. Only time will tell. All right, that is another pass done. Excellent. I don't know where that uh, that mower is going. I have no idea. It's back. Okay, I see what it's doing. It was just backing up. I was like, "What's it doing?" Excellent. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this guy run away. I run away. Let this guy run, and we'll come back next episode and do a little bit of bailing. Uh, get ready for some cattle. Like I said, it's no point in buying the cattle right now because we're not ready for it, basically. And uh, we've got that rower today, which is a pretty neat little rower. Let's go ahead and come into screenshot mode here. Grab a quick little screenshot of this awesome looking mower. It's coming this way. It looks pretty darn good, I have to admit. Black Sheep Bunny did a great job on it. Nice. All right, folks, that'll be it for me for today. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for what we should try and do next. And uh, that's it for me for today, like I said. And my name is Ian Robson. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for some more Counter Line. Catch you guys later.